The experiment is nearing its conclusion. The Enrichment Center is required to remind you that you will be baked, and then there will be cake. Hey everybody, my name is you, and welcome back to Let's Play Portal. In the previous episode, we were introduced to our friend, the Companion Cube, but we unfortunately couldn't take them with us throughout the rest of the test. In today's episode, in honor of the Companion Cube's memory, we shall go onward. We shall never give up. We shall get that cake. So right off the bat, we can go over here and explore a little bit behind the scenes of the Aperture Science test facility. And things are getting a little interesting. Not everything is as it seems in this place. So as we continue onward, one thing I'd like to say real quick is I do apologize if my voice uh, sounds a little bit different than usual. The reason for that is because I'm recording this video in post-commentary. The reason for that is because the original commentary wasn't that great. I was recording late at night and uh, I wasn't really talking a whole lot because I was so tired. And there was also a lot of background noise that just made the video quality not that great. So I figured rather than just uploading a video I'm not happy with, I'm just going to redo the commentary. And that's what we're doing today. And also, I'm recording this in my new apartment, and the soundproofing set up systems haven't been set up in my new office yet, so I do apologize if my voice sounds a little bit more echoey than usual. Uh, hopefully that won't be a problem for too much longer. It will happen a couple times uh, throughout the next couple of videos over the next couple of weeks or so, um, but hopefully it won't be a problem for too much longer. So as we go over here, we can see that there is a flinging puzzle that we can use uh, to gain access to this area over here. And this part coming up over here, I remember my first playthrough, this being one of those rooms that took like the longest for me to figure out. Um, because there's a couple of buttons in this area that can be a little bit tricky to figure out how to get to. And there's also some uh, torrents in this area that you need to watch out for. This button up here in particular, this one can be a little bit mean to reach to be completely honest. But once you figure it out, you shouldn't have too much of a problem. Now it is entirely possible to get through this entire room without taking care of the turrets. I think. I've never actually tried it before, but I heard from a friend that it is possible. So hopefully they're telling the truth or something like that. Um, but my advice is before you do anything else, after you activate the button of course to start the puzzle, you take care of those turrets before you get too far into the puzzle because otherwise you'll have quite a shocking experience, quite literally. And we did it! Yay! It's probably not the way that you're supposed to do it, but you guys know me. I like being unnecessarily epic. <laughs> so activating that energy ball of awesomeness so will activate this platform. And just so you guys wouldn't have to watch repetitive gameplay, I removed the part of the video that involved me taking out those turrets. It's the same strategy as before. Have the energy ball um, in the portals uh, positioned in such a way that the energy ball will bounce into the turrets to knock them off. So, I removed that part of the commentary because it was a little boring to watch, to be honest, because it's all things that we've seen before, and there's really nothing new to it, so that's the reason why I removed it from the video. Now, with this area in particular, this is a pretty interesting part, because what you want to do is you want to have this button positioned in such a way that you can go over there and eventually be able to fling yourself across the room. You're gonna to want to be quick about this, and eventually, we, aha, we did it. <laughs> so you want to be quick about that because the button will not be activated forever. Eventually, the door will go back down, and that will ruin your plans of conquering the world. Eventually, we'll be able to take, carry the box back over to the platform and continue on onward. But you may notice that the wall went back into place. So, what can we do here? Well, thankfully, we have portals, and we can use those to conquer the world. Kind of, except for now I'm doing that one. Instead, eventually when the platform comes back over here, we'll be able to jump onto the platform and get back over to that area and press the button again. Because that's exciting. Eventually the platform will get back over here. 
<laughs> I'm sorry if my commentary isn't that great. It's been a while since I did post commentary in these videos. So, I'm not. I usually prefer doing live commentary, but I wasn't happy with how it originally turned out in this video. Like, I was barely talking throughout any of it, so it was just really boring to watch. So, that's the reason why I'm redoing the commentary. So, um, it's a good idea to have your portals uh, positioned uh, before you press the button. And then you can get back up to here. And then carry the box with you over this way. And use it to activate the button. Alrighty then, now that we've taken care of that, we can go into this room. Man, I remember this area being such a pain to play on the PC version. Uh, for those of you who haven't watched the previous episodes, um, my history with Portal is that I played on the Steam version first, and I was using a laptop that had a touchpad mouse. That's not exactly the best combination when you're playing this kind of game, because for whatever reason, I couldn't move my character and move the mouse at the same time with the touchpad mouse or anything like that. So I'm not entirely sure why that was the case. It works perfectly fine with a keyboard and a traditional mouse, but this laptop uses a touchpad mouse. Um, and for whatever reason, the touchpad and the d-pad don't like getting along, and they don't like working together at the same time when you're not activating the right, po uh, the right portals, apparently. <laughs> yeah, it took me a little bit to get into the right groove of using the right, po right portals to finish this puzzle. But eventually we'll be able to figure it out. At some point, maybe, hopefully. <laughs> um, but yeah, this game is definitely not really built for a touchpad mouse, so, so if you're going to play this on a laptop or anything like that, I highly recommend you get an external mouse uh, before you start playing, because it will save you a lot of headaches trying to play this with a touchpad. So this area right here is also pretty neat, because you're going to be using the momentum of the portals to reach higher areas. If you have motion sickness problems, this may be a bit of a problem um, because they're going to be going pretty fast in this area, so that may give people a little, may make people a little nauseous if they have motion sickness problems. I don't personally, and I don't know anybody who does have motion sickness, um, but I knew that. But I know that some people were complaining online that this puzzle made them nauseous because of how fast you were going and trying to aim while you were moving quickly and things like that. I also know some people got motion sickness from playing Super Mario Galaxy 2 because of the gravity. I'm um, not necessarily Galaxy 2, but just in general well those done. games. Be advised that the next test requires exposure to uninsulated electrical parts that may be dangerous under certain conditions. For more information, please attend an Enrichment Center Electrical Safety Seminar. But I don't wanna. <laughs> Alrighty then. So now we have one more puzzle left, and we'll be able to get that cake that we've been promised oh so often throughout this journey. We promised the companion cube that we would get cake, and we shall fulfill that promise. Welcome to the final test. When you are done, you will drop the device in the Equipment Recovery Annex. Enrichment Center regulations require both hands to be empty before any cake. Personally speaking, I think the previous test chamber was more difficult than this one on my first playthrough. Uh, so I kind of wish that this one and the other one were reversed in terms of their locations, but I understand why this one is located where it is. So what you want to do next, now that you take care of that, you want to go over here and uh, you want to be able to activate the portals in a way that you'll be able to reach the platforms. And this area here could be a little bit nerve-wracking because uh, you have a bit of a time crunch to activate these buttons to get back on the platform because of those uh, door things that you need to activate. Um, it's not too tricky, it's just a little bit nerve-wracking when you're in the moment in the first playthrough trying to figure out how to do this quickly. And there's also this rude energy ball of evilness uh, that will be bouncing around and isn't very nice. Thankfully it didn't affect us, so we'll be all good to go. And 
And now there's only one more door blocking our path. So after we take care of this, the cake is just around the corner. Congratulations, the test is now over. All aperture technologies remain safely operational up to 4,000 degrees Kelvin. Best assured that there is absolutely no chance of a dangerous equipment malfunction prior to your victory incandescence. Thank you for participating in this aperture science computer-aided enrichment activity. Goodbye.